Hey, KB, I'm, I'm right out of the gate. I'm going non-football. Just hoping you can tell the story uh, again about delivering your son, just how that all came, kind of came about and how nerve-wracking that process was for you. Uh, I mean, it's one of those deals where we just couldn't make it to the hospital. Obviously, we wasn't planning on having a baby at the house. Um, wife was having pretty bad contractions. I actually fell asleep because she was having contractions earlier that night, and um, they ended up subsiding. And so I thought the baby was going to come the next day, so I ended up going to sleep. Wifey woke me up probably about 1030. I have a contraction. She was on the bathroom floor. So I kind of got up, started, you know, not really panicking, but scrambling to get some clothes on, helping her try to get dressed. Uh, her mom was downstairs, so I had to call her mom upstairs to help us out or whatever. And um, I was downstairs getting the car ready, went back upstairs. She was on her feet moving around, but she was still having pretty bad contractions. Um, called the doula, told the doula's meet at the hospital. She Then she quickly told me, um, call her back, uh, tell her to meet us at the house. Uh, so I'm, I'm then now I'm really starting to scramble a little bit. Uh, so I think I went back downstairs for something. I guess I'm still getting the car ready. Or whatever. I came back upstairs, she was back on the floor on her hands and knees, having contractions. Um, got the doula on the speakerphone and the doula's talking to her, asking how she's feel. She's saying, I, I can't really move. I feel like the baby's about to come, you know, those type of things. So the doula kind of switched the game plan. She was, she was actually probably 30 minutes away because she was, uh, I think she lived out in Franklin or whatever. I'm living in Nashville. Um, then she eventually said, let's try to get her in the bathtub. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, let's try to get her on her feet. So I'm trying to just to check back there, kind of pull the pants down a little bit, just see what's going on. And the head was already poking out. So at this point I'm back there like, oh man, the head's poking out. Talking to the doula. She's like, okay, just tell her to start breathing, relax. And just tell her to start pushing. The baby's coming. And, um, so, so obviously, like I said, she's on her hands and knees. So the baby, when the head started to come out, his face was pointing upwards. So I could see his face was real purple. Um, so I was kind of nervous about that. So, you know, the doctor, I mean, the doula told me to support his head, uh, check around his neck, check for the bit of cord, be wrapped around his neck. And it wasn't, good, thank God. And, um, man, wifey started pushing, man, about 10, 15 minutes later, man, once she, once she got his head out and his shoulders, everything kind of just slipped out, man. I kind of caught him, um, you know, caught him in my arms. Uh, he waited about five seconds. Uh, he coughed about twice, two or three times, start crying, um, and laid my wife down on her back. Man, we did skin to skin, waited for the ambulance and the doula to arrive, and uh, we ended up getting a placenta out, cut the umbilical cord, man. Then we headed to the hospital. So, all this happened within from 10:30 to 11:05. This is like a 30-minute period, and things kind of went fast. And <laughs> hey, hey, what's it, what's your son's name? Uh, he, he's going to be the fourth, actually. So Kevin Leon Byer, the fourth. And and uh, what day was that? This was August the 23rd. He was due on the 24th, but he ended up coming the night before on the 23rd. And it's funny because my daughter's birthday is on the 22nd. So we got back-to-back -back birthdays in the buyer home. And I guess of all the things you've done on the field, that kind of top, you know, that, that catch there, uh, best you'll probably ever make in your life? Oh, most definitely. Uh, that was the most memorable, probably the most memorable thing me and my wife has ever been through in our relationship other than obviously getting married. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's the story I'm going to be able to tell my son, uh, you know, for the rest of our days. Uh, Tron? Man, I don't even want to ask you a football question after <laughs> that. But uh, <laughs> uh, looking at the Jaguars game uh, last week, there were a few blown coverages that resulted in, in some big plays. It seemed like that was schemed up. How do you go about avoiding, you know, having those same type of uh, mishaps that the Colts did last week? They just playing with great eyes. Uh, that's something that I felt like we didn't do very well. Uh, on Monday night in the Denver game, some things we got to clean up there. But it's really just playing with good eyes, playing within the defense, understanding that's a defensive back, you know, having your eyes in the backfield, usually bad things will happen. So, you know, having your eyes on your man. Uh, if you have man coverage on the receiver, just having your eyes on him uh, or like or vice versa if it's a tight end or whatever. So just having your eyes on man, just playing within the defense. Uh, Kayla? Hey, KB, uh, two-parter for you. First one, just talking about the Jags, young quarterback Gardner Minshew. I think a lot of people are not quite sure if he's the real deal yet, but you guys faced him once last year. You saw what he did in week one. What makes him dangerous? Well, I, I think he just does a great job playing within, you know, the scheme of what they're trying to do on offense, uh, not taking too many chances. Uh, he's pretty good when he gets out on the move, uh, scram as a quarterback. I think he only threw one incomplete pass. Uh, the last game through like two or three touchdowns. So he had a pretty good game. He's one to know against us. So uh, we have to find a way to stop this guy, keep him in the pocket, you know, make him be a pocket quarterback, make him beat us uh, in the pocket. And um, 
I mean, I think he's just a good he's a good guy. He has a little bit of swag to him. I think everybody can see that. Um, so, like, I, I think he's a, I think he's a pretty good quarterback, in my opinion. My second question to you was just about. I think you tweeted out it took me five years to get my first career force fumble, uh, but finally happened or whatever. It's just you, when you look at those little things, though, Kevin, and your journey in the NFL. Do you keep kind of surprising yourself even with these little things that happen? You're like, okay, this was a first. Yeah, I mean, I'm always trying to, you know, find ways really just to get the ball. Honestly, uh, right? If it's forcing a fumble, interception, fumble recovery, you know, all those small things. And honestly, man, just really just you know showing great effort and finish. Uh, just trying to run to the ball. I always was told as as a young player, you know, anytime you're hustling to the ball and you're running a full speed at all times, good things happen. So that's what I just try to do. I try to run to the ball and just try to always put myself in position to make plays. Uh, Teresa? Kevin, uh, this franchise hasn't started off the season winning its first two games since 2008. How important is it for this franchise to try to build now some momentum? Uh, any lessons learned from last year, particularly the ability? It's nice to be able to come back from a two and four start, but nice maybe to not find yourselves in that position to start with this year, maybe? Yeah, I mean, the goal every week is to be one to know. Uh, you know, I don't really look at it as, you know, trying to go two and oh because the franchise never done it before. You know, I just think it's all about trying to go, you know, beat a division opponent. Obviously the number one goal every single year is to win the division. So we have to start by beating our division opponents. So uh, we got a really good Jacksonville team who, I, I mean, me personally, obviously a lot of people were saying that, you know, they were in tank mode, but I mean, I, I think they have a good roster and that, I think that's just goes to show that they went and beat the coast. I think the coast kind of under, underestimated them and they went in the dog fight. So, you know, I'm hoping it won't be a dog fight for us. Hopefully we can get up and, uh, you know, score a lot of points. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's all about just trying to be one to know this week. Eric? Hey, KB. I just want to ask you about the poise of, of some of the rookies on your defense. Uh, you had some good stuff to say the last time we spoke about to you about Chris Jackson, Christian Fulton. I'm just curious about what you saw from them uh, in their debut uh, a couple days ago. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they did some good stuff in the game. Uh, I mean, obviously, it was their first time ever in the NFL game, regardless of if it was fans out there or not. You know, it takes a little time. You got to get your feet wet. It's some things that they got to clean up. But it's some things as the entire defense, we all got to clean up. We all have some plays out there, uh, you know, as a total of the defense that we feel like we can have back. So I uh, wasn't surprised that, for them to have a, a couple plays out there, but I, I, I love the effort. Uh, and I think as the year go on, they'll continue to get better and better. And uh, I mean, they're going to have to play big, uh, you know, big minutes and uh, big snaps for us this year, obviously with, with some guys down right now. Uh, Buck? Kevin, uh, they obviously personnel changes from year to year. They've got a couple of different pieces or a couple of guys who aren't there anymore, a new offensive coordinator. What, what looks different about them from maybe years past? Uh, I mean, they didn't take a, a lot of shots in the game. Um, I mean, they still have DJ Sharp, who's a really good Pro Bowl receiver. Um, they have the rookie, number 10, who uh, I think he's, he's he kind of put you in, in the mindset of an A.J. Brown as far as body type. Uh, they're going to try to do whatever they can to get him, uh, get the ball in his hands. They put him in the Wildcat. They put him in the back foot and actually ran him, uh, ran the ball with him. So he's a pretty good receiver. Um, you know, Conley, they have um, Keelan Cole. So they have they still have some guys that were there last year. But like you said, it's a different offense. Uh, Jay Gruden, who's a pretty good uh you know, offensive coordinator. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little bit different. Uh, like I said, they don't take as many shots. But that was just – it's only one game, though. They didn't take as many shots in the last game. But uh, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if they would try to take, uh, take some shots this game. I'm uh, starting to run out of time. Uh, Terry? KB, hey, uh, how much does it kind of get your attention when they knock off the Colts who were expected to be one of the division favorites? in the opening week uh, when a lot of people kind of thought Jacksonville was in rebuild mode? Yeah, I mean, it just goes to show you shouldn't underestimate anybody. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, all this preseason talk is really just talk. It's just nothing but noise. Uh, last year, you know, everybody crowned the Cleveland Browns to be, you know, the team to go win the Super Bowl, and we end up beating them in week one. So you can't underestimate anybody. It's all about going out there and executing uh, the game plan on all three phases. And, you know, it's football at the end of the day. So, like I said, all the talk really means nothing. We're going to go out there and beat a division opponent in Jacksonville Jaguars. Both 1-0, and and somebody has to be 2-0 and at the end of the week. Uh, John, go ahead. Kevin, uh, you guys have had some uh, some big goal line stands uh, over the past couple seasons. What, why have you guys been some uh, successful in some 
some key moments in uh, in goal line stands, you think? Yeah, I mean, I think goal lines is all about, you know, pride, uh, not letting the other team get in there. I mean, obviously, I felt like we should have had two goal line stands. Uh, we, we, we have to be better in the red zone, period. We shouldn't even let them get down there that close. But, um, but yeah, I mean, just talking about, you know, Jeffrey Simmons and that big play that he made, uh, it's, it's just all about a want to in, in, in the defense telling ourselves and bowing our back and saying we're not going to let these guys score. That's what goal line defense is all about. It's not a lot about schemes. It's just about want to and, you know, whipping somebody's tail that's in front of you. Thanks. Sir? Hey, KP, I was asking uh, just Ryan about, you know, it's going to be the home opener and normally that's going to be a loud, rowdy atmosphere, but obviously that won't be the case this time. How, how odd will that be? And what was it like in Denver? And was it more of an advantage in an away team not having to deal with that? Um, no, I think it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's a home field advantage or nothing. I think it's an even playing field. Um, it, it was a, it was a different experience out there. I'm not even going to lie, uh, especially like during TV timeouts where, you know, you usually be a, a little bit of noise. You can hear the fans. You know, you usually see Wesley Will, you're hyping up the crowd and stuff like that. It was a couple of times, TV time, even when Taylor had went down and uh, it was complete silence in the stadium. I mean, you can hear a pin drop in the stadium. So that was definitely a new experience. But once you're out there playing, uh, and, the, and the ball snap, and you're in between, uh, in between those lines, and, and the whistle's blown. It's just football at the end of the day. I mean, the energy's going and stuff like that. But yeah, it's definitely a different experience that uh, I think we're all going to have to get used to, honestly. Uh, we'll finish up with uh, Don. She's got a couple of MTSU questions for you. Hey, KB. I'm working the game for ESPN on Saturday and uh, saw your tweet for Coach Stock. We're going to talk about him. Obviously, he's in his 15th season there. Um, what makes him special as a coach and what has he meant to you? Uh, I mean, first, just as, as, a, as, a, as a person, uh, Coach Stock just cares. He cares a lot about all his players. I, w- I, would, I would definitely think that, I mean, everybody that I know for a fact still has a relationship with him, uh, former players and everybody. Uh, he's a great player. He's a, I mean, he's a great coach. He cares about his team. But as, as a coach on the field, I think he just tries to get everything up out of you. Uh, he try to push his guys to the limit. Uh, he kind of teaches the same thing that we teach here, you know, talking about effort and finish, having a great attitude every single day, coming into the building. Uh, if somebody asks you how you're doing, you always say great, just keeping a great attitude. You talk about toughness, being a tough team, being a tough individual. Um, and turnovers. I mean, uh, that's something that he always preached. So, I mean, I really enjoyed my time there at MTSU. And uh, I, mean, I still talk to Coach Stock almost every other week. I mean, he actually texted me before the game. So, like I say, he's a great coach and a great person. Uh, along those lines, turnovers, they play Troy, first time since 2012. 2012 was your redshirt freshman year where you forced three turnovers. That was kind of, it seems like one of your breakout games. You remember that? And what do you know about Troy and that rivalry? Yeah, I know. I think before that game, we hadn't beat Troy in like Coach Stock's entire uh, time at MT. And I think they had played a few times because we was in the Sun Belt at the time. Um, but yeah, it was a memorable game because one of our team captains, Craig uh, Craig Allen, who was a junior at the time, had a career ending neck injury. Um, one of those deals where you can hear a pin drop in the stadium. Everybody was kind of down uh, in spirits or whatever. And um, I think like two or three plays later, I took a pick six to the house to kind of put us ahead. And that was actually the game winning touchdown to win the game. So probably one of the most, that was probably the most memorable game that I probably had at MTSU, uh, that game against Troy. So it's going to be a big game on Saturday. Hopefully the guys can pull out the win.